This is Envision Self Healing Podcast, Episode 8. Hi, I'm Will Fuller. And I'm Richard Miller. And we are the co creators of EnvisionSelfHealing.com. And we're dedicated to help you improve your eyesight and quality of life by taking healing into your own hands. Uh, the topic today is uh, the importance of having an eye exercise program and how to create it. And the question of the week this week comes from our uh, YouTube and also from our Facebook this week asking which are the best eye exercises to help improve myopia. So Richard, how is the world of self-healing treating you this week? Well, it was another interesting week for me. Um, well, two things happened. I started using um, obstruction glasses more around my house. Okay. And um, as a way of actually, I guess I was actually addressing my optic atrophy, which I've made a shift towards dealing with that more than my presbyopia, or shift towards doing both. Mm-hmm. Um, and the interesting thing was, one of the interesting things that happened this week was I was getting ready to finally get my taxes to my accountant. Okay. Still working on that. Always a pleasurable time of year. Oh, yes. My dining room table is full of papers, as you can see. <laughs> um, so I got out. Uh, oh, and I happened to lose my magnifier. That uh-huh. was another thing that happened. I still don't know where it is. And it, uh, when we, it was pre- previously you mentioned how you... One sort of the, of, ah, it was the camera you... You use the camera without your magnifying glass. Right, right. But, you know, when I'm doing something like my taxes where I'm worried about being audited, I guess I instinctively (laughs) reach for my magnifier. But I happened to lose it, and I found an older one that was scratched and not as as good as the Mm -hmm. the one I normally have. So I I started to reach for that, and it was, like, so frustrating to use that I said, I'm going to stop using it. So I put it aside, and here I am reading the... um, my accountant's, um, it's a guide for creating, you know, the information he needs for okay. doing my taxes. A modern day guide for tax. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> tax and so I'm reading this and it's fairly small type. Yeah. And I just started reading it. Wow, was, without your magnifying glass. Without my, and I do believe it was because I had just spent uh, maybe half an hour wearing the obstruction glasses around the house, looking for the papers and organizing, <laughs> cleaning up, that kind of thing. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so that was uh, the, the, the pleasantry that happened in terms of my eyes. The other thing that happened, uh, which I talk about in my blog, which uh, maybe you'll have to just go to my blog to see, but I discovered um, uh, in, in posting my previous blog on optic atrophy, an exercise for optic atrophy, I posted it on YouTube and looked to the side and uh, saw some videos on stem cell treatments in China. Okay. So uh, that started sort of a, uh, an exploration, kind of an emotional exploration too, because I had basically written off uh, any kind of medical treatment for my condition. Okay. So, uh, and I hadn't done research on it as, in terms of medical treatments in, in a few years. So I just decided it was, uh, it was a done deal. And so to see this uh, possibility of a treatment was sort of exciting and sort of like, uh, it, it concerned me too in that, that it was being done in China and right. not in this country. But and everything is made in China. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> even stem cells. Even, even your eyeball. <laughs> in fact, probably the models that we've got of eyes. Okay. That's not actually instilling a lot of confidence in me to go to, to, go to China. But they make everything. So. They make everything anyway. Yeah. yeah, it's true. And cheaper too. <laughs> so anyway, no. I, so you're so going to investigate. You I'm going to investigate, research. yeah. But we did. We treated a guy, didn't we, that had come from China. Exactly. Um, and, and he had the stem cells and he... He noticed some improvement, um, but not a lot. And I, he did see more improvement with our exercises than he did. Right. He came from directly from getting the stem cell treatments, I believe, to... Uh, maybe there was a bit of a gap there, but yeah. he came almost directly to us. Uh, so he believed that combining the self-healing oh, okay. methods with the stem cell was the best yeah. approach. And I guess I, I obviously came to the same conclusion when I saw these videos, mm. that... Um, if the stem cells were implanted in you, then you would need to encourage them to grow. Because they're actually, 
attaching themselves to your optic nerve and growing. Okay. So um, I can't think of a better way of creating a good environment for them to grow in than the yeah, small healing exercises. techniques. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. And okay. uh, incorporate, and hopefully maybe. The, the companies doing it will pick up on the eye exercises as well and hopefully they encouraged yeah or an, anyone that's listening to this that you know has is going to or has had the stem cells or anything really it's great to combine these exercises right they are doing in china i think the advantage of it being done in china is they believe in acupuncture very strongly right. so they are using acupuncture they're using face massage which is something we believe in yeah uh, and they use some sort of electric stimulation to the face. Mm. It's again, probably trying to take away tension in the face or stimulate right. the nerves. Um, cool. Well, that's in- interesting. You have to uh, keep us updated. Yeah, I will. So that's been those two things were going on for me this week. Nice. And how about you? Yeah, it's been. Uh, I feel like we might have had a bit of a role reverse in the last week. <laughs> last week, I was. Uh, <laughs> sitting here criticizing and uh, condemning Richard for not doing his eye exercises and I've still done my exercises this last week um, I think I was more disappointed in my diet um, uh, it wasn't yeah. as good I, it's, it's just been a crazy last seven days um, you know for near clients and also we're doing you know, so much work preparing these lectures and now we've got um, a future program that we're you know we're looking to set it up so stay uh, stay tuned for that but we're trying to you know get these programs out to everyone and uh, making it accessible to everyone so it's really a lot of work for us um, to do but you know I still managed to fit in my my hour of my you know peripheral vision because I've sort of worked that into my routine now pretty well but it was just having that extra bit of time to do the juicing and you know oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, e- even go shopping to even get the vegetables in the first yeah, you know I mean. and then you get back late and then you know to cook a nice healthy meal when you get back right sometimes it could be challenging and you just reach for some ink or on the way home you just pop in somewhere and oh right get something so um it wasn't so much my exercise as it was uh, uh, my diet but i did um my my clear vision still stayed even though i hadn't done the juicing which you know makes sense i think it's more of an accumulation thing just like right. the eye exercises I think if I continued to go this route, then I would probably, you know, not see as the improvements I've been getting with my vision. Um, I also think that, you know, the brain adapts so quickly, you wouldn't, I guess I wouldn't even know anyway if right. my vision was getting slightly worse from not getting the yeah, nutrition. Yeah, it's slow, yeah. Um, but when you start again, then maybe you would see the, the improvements. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's funny because I love sort of observing how my body functions in these environments and I was certainly a lot more fatigued but I guess you could argue that I was busy as well but after about a week my body was just craving just craving nutrients like I, <laughs> I just became a nutrient fiend and uh, that's and right we went out to lunch that day and you had a salad yeah, and you were just so, like yeah. whoa something <laughs> good I'm eating and then uh, and then just the weekend I went to the farmer's market and just got as many greens as possible yeah and, uh, yeah and you know last night I had a giant salad and again giant salad for lunch again today and immediately as soon as I start eating those fresh fruit and vegetables I just pick up and I start feeling better when you did go to that party dressed for the 70s theme party dressed in white bell bottoms <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize we were going to talk about this <laughs> on air, a pink yeah. tuck shirt <laughs> and, a, and a long wig and did they did they feed you let's see I'm trying to remember food from the 70s oh um, uh, the cheese whiz and uh, they oh. should have fed you food from the 70s that it, it was actually it was actually quite nice where they'd hide out a restaurant it was actually a work uh, a work thing that I went to my fiance's uh staff event that she that they have every year so um they had more sort of uh, finger food i guess they know. should have done ritz crackers with cheese whiz that should have been <laughs> yeah. perfect yeah i don't know whether everyone would have just left <laughs> <laughs> we got to do it. they did have some cheese and some crackers they did okay that. it was more like uh crab sticks and anyway i'm sure people don't want to know that, but. <laughs> but it's interesting you say that actually because it does lead into um a more challenging story that i had and one thing, I don't know if you remember, a few weeks ago I was talking about how I, I was introduced to one of my friends, uh, her boyfriend in a very dark oh, yeah. uh, bar, 
and he was a little bit offended that I didn't shake his hand. Yeah. Obviously, there seems to be a theme here because I'm meeting all of my fiancé's work colleagues. Oh, right. And it's uh, 70s night, so it's all dark in there, and the restaurant was... Um, anti-retinitis pigmentosa. So there, <laughs> there was uh, a, a sunk in the sort of dance floor area where it used to be a, a restaurant or is a restaurant, but you can hire it out. So, but you've got these uh, mosaic uh, tiled flooring, and the stairs are also in the same mosaic. Oh, I hate that. Yeah. So there's no lighting. Everything's the same color. Everything oh. looks the same. And then you know, there's you know, a hundred people walking around enjoying themselves in the 70s and of course I'm trying to meet people everyone's new <laughs> you your the white belt by yeah. the pink, pink yeah. texture yeah. and I'm just you know <laughs> excited at how comfortable I feel in my in my white flare corduroy <laughs> bell bottoms which I'm definitely going to start wearing from now on so comfortable um, so anyway I, I thought I did quite well and, and those of you that have RP or any eye condition um, when you start looking at how you interact with people you notice that you come up with ways to uh, overcome certain difficult situations. So I, I learned to be the first person to shake the other person's hand. Right. Because a lot of the time I was sort of standing there smiling at them. Yeah. And then my fiance would well, give me a bit of a nudge on the arm. Yeah. She's like, hand, 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 hand. And then shake the hand. But I, I was doing really well not to sort of embarrass myself until the boss. Oh. <laughs> of course. And um, so we're standing there and some people are dancing and I'm um, standing next to my fiancé, next to her is, is her boss and then next to her is her husband. So we're in oh, a line okay. of four looking forward. And she was like, oh, and this is my boss. I'm like, oh, hi, how you doing? You know, nice to meet you. And so and this is my husband and I put my hand out and, you know, smiled and he didn't shake my hand. So I was oh, like, oh, okay. Huh. So, you know, I, he, and he must not have really been paying attention oh, so, that's so funny but I just thought alright so he's not overly interested so I'm standing there and she was like well and I turn back around again and I'm looking and, and he still has an expressionless face on right so I was like well he doesn't want to shake my because normally you can tell in somebody's face if they're oh, right, uh, talking right, right. or so so I'm looking off to the right into just as to where nobody's <laughs> there like, am, I, am I missing something here and she's like oh, well and I'm like looking over at the boss she's like no well and I'm looking over at him and then I finally uh, just put my hand out and shook his hand. Oh, good. Okay. Um, but in, in classic uh, RP style, you said, oh, sorry, all this 70s stuff is so overwhelming, I can't take it all in. <laughs> the wig got in my <laughs> way. The wig. <laughs> Damn you, wig. The tight pants. Yeah, yeah right. The tight pants. So uh, anyway, I thought that was uh, pretty entertaining. Yes. Um, and obviously you could take that one in two ways. But I did find... Um, that when I sort of took a time out and I wasn't being so overwhelmed with all the people mm. and, and being afraid of shaking people's hands and stuff, right. I did notice that it was things were brighter and it was easier to take oh. things in. And I also did an interesting experiment where I uh, took somebody's sunglasses and I wore them in the dark for like five minutes. Really? So that I would adjust to the darker environment so that when I took the sunglasses oh, off, that's interesting. things were brighter in the room. Really? So it's really like right. a pseudo palming with sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. We don't want to encourage this, folks. Yeah, we're it's not. It's an interesting Sorry, yeah. experiment. <laughs> yeah, that's not an official exercise. <laughs> it's not an exercise at all. So it wasn't all uh, negative this week. There were subpluses that I had, and uh, it was quite an enjoyable one. Actually, I went to um, Modern... So the Natural History Museum. Yeah, 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 yeah the down, new one. Yeah, down in uh, Golden Gate Park. And on Thursday nights, they do, um, they close it to anyone under 21. Oh. And they, they get like a bar and some music oh, really? and some bands playing. And, wow. you know, they, they have all these sort of special guests and all these special previews of stuff and all oh, sort wow. of fun, funky stuff. But uh, it was a little bit busy. And, um, but anyway, when we were there, we were really encouraged to go to the astrology. Not astrology, astronomy. Astronomy auditorium. <laughs> so what would you call it? You know... Oh, well... Oh, yes, there's a word for this. With the stars, yes. Yeah. You're, you're talking to a 54-year-old. I can't remember <laughs> the word. You can tell that we're not really up on our... Uh, uh, oh, planetarium. There we go. There we go. You'd think there'd be plants in it, but there's not. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm in this planetarium, and uh, it was pretty amazing. They sort of go through all the stars and what have you. And it's, so it's like a dome, like a three... 
60 dome, I guess, right, in right. circumference and goes up. And they've got like six projectors right. that come up the side of the wall and that's how it works. So, but where these projectors come out, there's a light, uh, like a complete 360 circle of light. And I noticed as I was sitting there that I could sort of see these lights out of the corner of my eye. And after uh, what we've been talking about previously about being able to test your own, you know, vision or whatever and, and what sort oh, of yeah. clues you can get to test, I thought, well, this is a 360 dome. So yeah. let's see. So I looked, oh, yeah. I looked straight up at the uh, sort of ceiling. So it was completely around me. Oh, yeah. And I could see probably about 90% of the 360 of the dome there was maybe just wow there was maybe just bits of light now i couldn't necessarily see detail that was on the on the roof probably because it was black and full of stars yeah. um, but i was able to ma- i could you know map in my periphery the 360 of the uh, of all the lights That's very cool and it so I was, I was pretty pleased with that so um yeah um, we enjoyed it so much that we went and saw a second one there as well. Well, now you have a testing site. You can just go back to the planetarium every <laughs> time to test your peripheral vision. Yeah, but I've always one of my aims in, in all these eye exercises is to uh, is to be able to see stars. Oh night. yeah. Because obviously, without the rods, you can't pick up those low level of light. So it is uh, it is one of my goals in the future is to be able to see stars. Right. So I did cheat a little bit, and I were I was able to see the stars. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so certainly some positive stuff there. So I think it's about time that we head on to Topic of the Week. And the topic this week is how to create an eye exercise program and especially how we can integrate uh, eye exercises into our daily life as part of this program. And this is a really important part because... uh, in particular, Richard and I, you know, we've spent so many years doing these exercises and, and also working with our clients, and we, we really feel the frustration of just not having the time to do the eye exercises. Yeah, that's the, the big uh, problem with what we're trying to do, is that we can, we can see a client come up with a list of exercises they should be doing, mm. and then the reality is they do them for a little while, and then it just becomes a burden, and uh, they just... I mean, it's, it's sad. I've seen clients who really needed to be doing exercises yeah. and they just eventually give up because it's just too much for them to do. And we really uh, feel that with these exercises, I mean, you can get um, quick results depending on your condi- uh, condition sometimes. And, you know, we, we have things like the flashes of clear vision that we've talked about previously. But in general, it's an accumulation of doing the exercises. Um, and over the weeks and months and years, is where you really start to get the permanent right, improvements right. and you really start seeing the benefits. So sort of our aim really, and this is our, what we're sort of launching an attack on, on the world, is is how can we get people to do these exercises in their daily lives yeah. um, and prevent them to you know, relapsing, so to speak, and just not doing the exercises. Especially, it couldn't be any more frustrating for our clients when they're like, I know these exercises are helping me, right, right. but I'm not doing them. Yeah. And uh, they get very frustrated. Maybe I was just thinking that maybe the problem is that, um, you know, when we go to the gym, we don't expect to go to the gym once and have, you know, big biceps and six pack and all yeah. of that stuff. We get it with the body muscles or something. Mm -hmm. But then it seems like with the eye, maybe we revert back to the medical model of we want the silver bullet to fix it once and for all, just like, you know, like uh, that. So we, when we treat eye exercises, maybe we treat them as, oh, I'm getting an injection or I'm getting a surgery, rather than this is a, you know, you don't go, I'm, I'm never going to, I'm going to exercise for three weeks and never have to exercise again. Yeah, and I bet, I mean, also, I mean, if you're somebody that would maybe call it alternative medicine... Yeah. If, if you're somebody that takes a pill, it's an alternative to the medicine. So right. maybe it should work in three weeks because it's an alternative to the medicine. Yeah, like I'm going to go get um, acupuncture hi- or um, what's that stuff called with the little pills. Anyway, when a, a naturopathy kind of yeah. approach, you would expect maybe to only do it for a little short time and then yeah. be fixed and move on in that sort of pseudo-medical model. And I really feel actually thinking about it as a phys- physical education instructor... You know, and, and when I was doing my degree 
um, in sports science. A lot of what we talked about is is educating with nutrition. You know, educate. Yeah, you need yeah. to when the people are educated and uh, they understand why they need to do something, then it's so much easier. Yeah. And if you think about, um, and that's also part of our learn create approach that um, we will go into another time. So, but if you think about it, uh, there's a big push at the moment because obesity and, and yeah. diabetes is causing such a strain on, on the government and finances that you know they need to find a solution to this. So children are educated. I do educate children to exercise in yeah. 30 minutes a day and go do, and you've done it from young. Nobody is educated from young. Exercise your eyes, make sure you look into the distance. Right. And maybe if we were educated, from you know, from a younger age, and it was common knowledge, then maybe we wouldn't expect it to be yeah, quick a magic pill, because we yeah. actually understand that it's you know, it's muscles, it's part of the eye, it's structure. Yeah. It takes time to change. It's just another part of the body that needs the same kind of treatment. Interesting. Yeah. I hope we're recording this discussion. We yeah, should. <laughs> <laughs> we should. Uh, we should write this up at some point. All right. Now we actually have to get back to our topic a little bit, but it's it's right. related. But yeah. um, so we. Um, We've been uh, teaching this class online, and uh, this was the last week. Yeah, we did a we went over six, this topic. Yeah. six week course. And uh, those of you that have been listening to these in succession, we've gone over the uh, each anatomical parts of the eye that we felt is really important that you you need to work on um, generically in, in order to reduce the strain and to get the eye to a healthy state. Um, it's also it actually developed from our uh, ebook, the Modern Day Guide for Improving Eyesight. Right. Um, so, sort yeah. of an increase there. So, um, uh, so we and in, each, in this course, we each we took two parts of the eye per week over a five week period, mm -hmm. and um, which was, it was quite difficult trying was. to fit all that information in, was. wasn't it? And this today, today we actually summarized the, the whole... previous five weeks. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and tough. went through it as in terms of like. Okay, what we said to our uh, listeners or our audience was uh, we gave them, for each eye part, we gave them either two or three exercises to pick from mm -hmm. and say, pick your favorite exercise. And then you determine whether it's a daily exercise, part of your daily exercise routine you're going to do, or you're going to integrate it into the flow of your daily life. And uh, it was an interesting process to go. It's what we go th we've gone through for ourselves and we've yeah. gone through with clients. It was interesting to do it in a in a webinar kind of format, and it's really sort of like a ten ten stop checklist mm -hmm. um, in a way. You know, am, am I am I working with this part of the eye? Am I working with this part of the eye? Yeah. And and even though you might have something like myopia, where you're really just dealing with the length of the eye, we really believe in a, in an all round healthy eye. Right, and you, you know? might you might emphasize one part of it. Say you have cataracts you would maybe emphasize the, the lens exercises more and maybe do them more in a more formal way and for more minutes yeah. of the day. But and, I, and again, our tendency is that quick fix. It's like, yeah. okay, well, there's all these exercises, but just give me one. Just yeah, give me that true. one magic yeah, eye exercise. Yeah. Um, and I can do it. Uh, my vision will all be cleared. And, and what we're saying here is a lot more of a holistic approach that the whole body is involved. And even when we talk about you know the body as well, um, people just don't appreciate how important that is and and even today one of the biggest feedbacks that we got from our course um, other than you know how much they had enjoyed it and, and seeing the, the vision improvement that they did was that they were so unaware of how important the body right the body's role in vision and also how tight their necks were yeah. and, and and they enjoyed the massage right, right. quite a bit the self massage that we do so it is important to try and break that um, that model in your mind of you know give me the one exercise the quick fix the quick fix and then uh, we would encourage this process of looking at the eye exercises and trying to determine which ones you want to do uh, on a regular daily basis and which ones you can uh, you can just do in the in the in the flow of your uh, everyday activities as a way of building a, a program that includes both so you can kind of cover the whole eye. Uh, in those two parts, in the formal mm -hmm. exercises and integration, so. And we're 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 working pretty hard now these uh, these next couple of weeks on a way to try and get this as much of this information over to you as possible because it's right. it's really um, the way we've we've developed this program and we're now working it in with our clients. 
it's a very beneficial way um, for a couple of reasons really one in particular is is the eye exercises can see so seem so overwhelming yeah. so if you divide it into the two integrated and um, segregated. That you have. Formal, let's call Formal, it. Formal, yeah. Segregated. We need to, if anyone has a good idea of what we <laughs> We're can call it, just yeah. send us an email. Yeah. Um, so we've got these two categories, but it means instead of having, you know, two hours, oh, I've got to take two hours out of my day, it's okay, maybe I only need to take 40 minutes, you know, yeah. palming, sunning, distance looking, peripheral vision. So, but then you've got another 50 minutes of integrated. Right. But it's integrated, so it's not yeah. you're, you're not wasting any time. It's you don't have to get, you know you're not doing anything out of your norm. It's something that you've just integrated in, and our hope is that eventually everything ends up in that last column. Yeah, and everything is integrated, and you're doing it several hours a day without even thinking about it. Right. I mean, I I definitely do. I mean, I do an hour every day. My case is a little bit more, you know, extreme. I'm fighting, you know, degeneration in, in the periphery and also waking up my periphery after all these years of lack, or, lack of peripheral vision. So, you know, I need to dedicate that time. But um, once you start doing them uh, regularly, then it starts shifting over into your daily life. It becomes habit. Right, right. Pretty much. Yeah. So, and that's certainly one thing we can't emphasize enough here is that we're trying to produce positive visual habits into our daily lives. And ideally, we would do it as children. Um, obviously, there's not really much we can do about that now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, trying to build these habits instead of, you know, feeling st- stressed towards the exercises and feeling like, oh, now I have to do my eye. Now I have to stop doing something that I enjoy to right. go and do something that I don't. Right, right, right. And of course, no one's going to be motivated to do it that way. Yeah. So yeah, so we're looking forward to. We're obviously going to spend a lot more time on this because it is so important um, to everybody and also to us um, to help emphasise this point and um, for us all to work through it. So we will be talking over this again. But I think it's a good time to move to question of the week. So the question of the week comes from a uh, YouTube viewer and uh, some from Facebook. The same question from Facebook, yeah. which is, uh, what are the best eye exercises for myopia? See. Any <laughs> idea? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have myopia. Oh, we both have myopia, don't we? Yeah. Not as much as we used to. No, we both used to wear glasses yeah. and definitely don't anymore. I used to be minus two... Point five since I was maybe five years old and I went for a checkup a year ago and now I'm a minus one. Yeah. And she couldn't understand it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. And I used to be a minus four and a half and now I'm a little under two, two so wow. minus two. So. so that's competition then. <laughs> well, I think, I think actually if you start higher, it is easier. Right. It's like losing weight, you know, the heavier you are, the more easier, easier it, is it is to lose. But, um, so um, the main eye exercise, this is an easy, easy question to answer, is looking in the distance. Yeah. Um, and the, even though we've just spent the last 15 minutes saying that you can't just uh, do yes. one magic bullet eye yeah. exercise. Um, this is a, if you had a magic bullet for my eye, this would be it. Yeah. So, but of course we're talking mm-hmm. about, you know, there's a lot of strain on the eye. But in general, you know, as Richard said before, when you take all these lists of eye exercises and choose your program... You want to be doing all of them generally, not all of them, but you know, yeah. all parts of the eye generally. Um, but you want to focus on particular ones depending on your condition. So for me, I focus on peripheral vision. I don't solely do peripheral vision exercises, but it's a focus for me. And the same here is with myopia. A focus for you is to be doing distance looking. Right. And then you would support that with... Um Sunning, palming, yeah. those are more support exercises. Structing the, you know, even doing the peripheral vision is important because we're saying here that a lot of people develop myopia from a young age um, from doing too much near work. If you think about the majority of myopia is developed once children get to school age and it was the, the statistic of Taiwan having 80% myopia right and then a nearby island where literature isn't as um, prevalent prevalent 
is only maybe one percent right. of myopia. So uh, it's not it's not genetics or you know it's it's a clear example there of how uh, behaviour um, leads to structure or you know your environment, whatever you're doing you know, the body responds to that. So if you're someone that sits all day and never moves, your muscles become stiff. Well, and I have to add the sunning. So palming is, is very important in terms of just uh, relaxing the visual system and supporting, bringing energy to the eyes, all of those uh, positive things to the whole visual system. This brings up a question from our friend Bob from Portland, who uh, has been, he has high myopia mm-hmm. and has been working his program uh, diligently. Uh, and just recently, I brought up the idea of sunning as a very important part of it. And and he, uh, I think he's going to now incorporate, he hasn't been, well, he lives in Portland, so it's hard to incorporate yeah. sunning into your program. And you can do skying. Yeah, you can. Bulb. Um, <laughs> but the thing, we had this great discussion about that, and I reminded him that the pupil constricting is part of reading. Mm-hmm. So he could be working on the length of his eyeball or the brain processing the blur, whatever you want to talk, Mm -hmm. whatever is happening there. Um, You could work on that part of it, but if you don't have a constricted pupil, uh, you're not going to be able to read as easily. So sunning is very important for mm, the condition of of gaining clarity from a myopic... uh, And constricting the pupil to improve acuity, um, even though... It constricts more from near. Um, but it's also going to help activate the cone cells that we right. talk about so much and give you that clearer image. So um, certainly we would say here, the, the main things you want to be doing for myopia, distance looking, sunning, palming. palming. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they're, they're really a good start to get you working. And there's things like trying to wean yourself off your glasses. Exactly, yes. That would be a very good thing as well. Um, but yeah, so for eye exercises, they're certainly the, the main ones. And we, we obviously, we talk about this quite a bit. Yeah. And if you look at our uh, literature that you can find in our uh, free ebook that we have up on our website, A Modern Day Guide for Improving Eyesight, in there we actually talk about it um, in a bit more depth and how, right. um, you know, by nature we look out into the, the the eye was designed to be looking into the distance but how now we're straining it quite a bit more and the other thing you can do is go to our website and enter in the condition <laughs> oh yeah of, of course myopia. I forgot about that yeah. we only spent a year writing uh, writing this material. Stuff, yes. <laughs> you could go to our website enter in your condition as myopia and there'll be a free program there yes. as well so of course so the conditions tab if you're on the home page um, you'll see there it says conditions on the left hand side once you've clicked on that you will have uh, many conditions, retinitis pigmentosa, myopia, glaucoma, and just click on the myopia tab, and that will give you a full program, yeah. actually, that talks about it in a lot more depth. Yes. So, excellent. Well, great episode this week, uh, Richard. Nice to catch up with you again. Yeah, and uh, we've got a lot of work ahead of us this yeah. week, as usual. <laughs> so, let's see how we get on next week. And uh, good luck with your work and your eye exercises. And uh, as always, uh, we love your feedback uh, that you guys always give us. So you could either write a comment um, below on this uh, post, wherever you may be viewing it, or you could always uh, send us an email or even better, head over to our Facebook fan page where there's a nice community going on there where you can uh, post some comments and also catch up on a lot of what we're getting up to. And Will promises to pick, to post the picture of him, himself <laughs> in the white bell bottoms and pink tuck shirt. No, <laughs> the wig? No. We, we would have to have at least uh, 10, 10 or 20 posts of, uh, of demanding that picture. All right, right. do it, folks. <laughs> of, of me in uh, tight white flares and a pink ruffle top <laughs> and a nice long wig. No, we, we're going to have to work hard for that one. All I right. Think. But we'll see. All right, well, uh, good luck with your exercises this week and happy healing. Have a good week.